Welcome to my channel Black Sheep Logic. Today on the bench I'm going to take a look at this Fluke 8846A 6.5 digit precision multimeter. This multimeter which I've owned for a number of years is not an instrument that I use on a daily basis. It is nice to have access to a bench multimeter particularly if you're making little measurements as these are very very quick compared to a handheld. Also on rare occasions you may want to log some data over a period of time and a bench multimeter is great for that as it doesn't rely on batteries. This bench multimeter is a mid-range six and a half digit precision multimeter. I don't have a requirement for that level of resolution. Instead, I generally use this as a five and a half digit bench multimeter. I will occasionally use the six and a half digit bench multimeter to check some of my other meters, but accuracy is not something I'm normally particularly worried about. So let's take a look at this Fluke 8846A six and a half digit precision multimeter on the bench. This is the Fluke 8846A 6.5 digit precision multimeter. At the front of this meter we have our two primary input jacks, our two sense jacks for current measurement. We have the 400 milliamp jack as well as a 10 amp jack. This bench multimeter also has jacks on the back. For the purposes of this review we'll be using the front input jacks. This meter has a VFD, it is dot matrix, and we have a number of soft buttons underneath the display. Functions on this meter include DC volts, AC volts, DC current, AC current, ohms, continuity and diode, frequency, capacitance, temperature. This meter is auto ranging, but you can override that. There is also a trigger function, analyze, which we won't really get into today, your measurement setup, and the instrument setup. To turn this meter on and off, there is a power switch at the back of the meter that turns the meter completely off. Normally on a bench multimeter like this, you do not ever turn the instrument off. There is also a soft power button on the front of this instrument that is used to turn the display on and off. VFDs will dim over time, so turning the display off when not in use is a good idea. I have the Fluke 726 set up to source 5 millivolts, and the bench multimeter is showing that 5 millivolts. The set up I have for making this measurement is five and a half digits with an integration time of one PLC. I can change that. This is four and a half digits and this is six and a half digits. The meter is quite a bit slower. This is my preferred setup on the Fluke 8846A. It's five digits with an integration time of one PLC. This gives me a good compromise between the speed of measurement and also the readability of the display. When the display is being updated too quickly, it becomes very hard to read. I have now changed the Fluke 726 to source five volts and the Fluke 8846A is showing five volts. The Fluke 726 although it's a precision process calibrator does not have the precision of the Fluke 8846A. We can see that the meters are in close agreement to each other so this gives me a good level of confidence in my meters. I now have the Fluke 726 set up to source 10 volts and this really shows you the real benefit of a meter like this Fluke 8846A. Even though I'm not using the full resolution of the Fluke 8846A I still have 400 microvolt resolution with 10 volts applied. Using the full resolution of the Fluke 8846A with a 10 volt signal applied I have 10 microvolt resolution. I'm now using AC volts. The meter is set up in its medium resolution mode. We have a little warning on the display that a voltage greater than 30 volts is present. We're measuring approximately 240 volts. I'm going to use the second measurement function to look at the line frequency. 240 volts at approximately 50 Hertz. The Fluke 726 is now sourcing 4 milliamps. I'm using the 400 milliamp input jack and we're looking at DC current. The meter's resolution is 5 digits, 1 PLC integration time. And again, these two meters are in quite close agreement with each other. A downside of the dot matrix display is very quick updates become very difficult to read. I'm going to change the measurement setup to 6.5 digits, 100 PLC. Display update is now a lot slower and it becomes 
very easy to read, but it's really too slow to be useful. This is why I really like the five and a half digit resolution mode on this particular meter. The significant digits are still relatively easy to read, but the meter is also making quite quick measurements. The meter is now set up to make a resistance measurement. I have my two test leads shorter together. We're first going to look at a standard two wire resistance measurement on this meter. So I need to zero out that offset. I'm fairly happy with that. We're measuring this 2.2 ohm resistor right around 2 ohms. I'm going to increase the measurement resolution. By increasing the resolution, I have slowed down the measurement considerably. I'm now going to change to the lowest resolution. My update rate now is very, very quick. I'm now going to change back to my preferred five and a half digit resolution. As we can see, five and a half digit is really a good compromise between the speed of the update and the resolution. I have set this meter up to make a four wire Kelvin measurement. I'm just going to zero out any offset. This resistor is measuring approximately 2.18 ohms. The meter is set up in its highest resolution mode currently. I'm going to change that to my preferred five and a half digit resolution. And now I'm going to change to the lowest resolution. And at six and a half digit resolution, we had a very nice stable reading. At four and a half digits of resolution, I think the display is being updated too quickly. This again shows the good compromise between a very quick update at low resolution in a very slow update at high resolution. These are actually four wire Kelvin probes. The way this works is that these two primary jacks are split inputs. Only two jacks are therefore needed. These Kelvin probes are nice in the fact that they only need two input jacks because of the split jacks that this meter has. But for everyday use, these Kelvin probes, I find the cables are just too stiff to be useful. Shorted together, we have a little bit of an offset, so we'll just zero that out. Again I'm measuring that resistor at approximately 2.18 ohms in its highest resolution. Lowest resolution is somewhere around 2.18, 2.19. Finally at my preferred resolution of five and a half digits about 2.18, 2.19 ohms. I've now connected a typical set of test leads to the meter. We're now looking at continuity. It's a nice tone. A nice feature of the continuity mode is the ability to set the threshold. The threshold can be set to 1 ohm, 10 ohms, 100 ohms or 1 kilo ohm. I generally just leave it in the 10 ohm setting. Now looking at frequency, the Fluke 726 is set up to generate a 10 kilohertz square wave, 5 volt peak to peak. We're reading approximately 10 kilohertz. The second measurement function is showing 100 microseconds for the pulse width. We do have the ability to change the aperture. The aperture setting can be 10 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, or one second. Although the Fluke 8846A does have a capacitance mode, it's no better than most handheld meters. Here we're reading a capacitor at 1.5 microfarad. The high resolution tells us it's 1.52 microfarad. The final function I'm going to talk about today is temperature measurement. The ability to take a temperature reading with the Fluke 8846A is practically useless. It requires a special $500 platinum probe. It does not support any of the normal thermal couples you might have such as a k-type thermal couple. I do not own the probe and I have no intention of buying a $500 probe for it. So that was a very quick look at the Fluke 8846A six and a half digit precision multimeter. I've not covered some of the more advanced features or data logging on the meter. This was really just a basic overview of the meter itself. If there is any interest let me know in the comments and I'll cover some of the more advanced functionality in a separate video. The temperature a measurement is probably the biggest disappointment about this meter the fact that you need a special $500 probe and I certainly have not purchased a $500 temperature probe for it. I've got plenty of other meters that can make temperature measurements. It also lacks an auto hold feature which is something you've come to expect on a Fluke bench meter. Most of the Fluke handheld meters also have that function. I don't know why they left it off this particular meter. I hope you enjoyed this brief overview of the Fluke 8846A. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to do a follow up video. Thank you very much for watching this video and if you did enjoy this video please consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.